Okay, everyone. It, um, yesterday with compound interest, first four problems, there were lots of uh, people struggling. So hopefully uh, with these examples that I work for you, it'll be a little bit more clear for you. And if you did not do well on your HRW today, just send me a note and I will let you redo it. Um, I pulled these notes, pulled these problems off HRW, but um, as you all know, your numbers might be different. So it's good to see how we work them and then to use your own numbers to to solve the problems in your own um, your own assignment. So let's get started with number one. So this is the homework, not the your turn. So these are the 11 problems on that. Um, I worked with some people today on the tutorial. And so others of you feel free to call in tomorrow or connect in tomorrow and hear this. So let's go get started. So each year on the same day, Hassan deposits $250 in a savings account that earns simple interest okay, at a rate of 7%. He makes no other deposits or withdrawals. How much interest does his account earn in the first year, second year, and in the fifth year? So for this type of problem, we are going to make a simple table. We'll start with the beginning balance. We'll have addition, how much we do, and then we how much we're adding to it, and then the interest rate, and lastly, what is the interest in dollars? So let's make ourselves a table, and we're looking all the way to five years. So let's make years one, two, three, four and five. Okay, everybody look at this. So let's start with year one. We have zero dollars and we add in 250. In my case, yours might be another number. So whatever your number is, you put it in this column. Now my interest rate is 7%. So I'm going to multiply everything by 0 0.07. 7% is 0 0.07. So now let's see the calculator. And we are going to clear it. So, so 250 times 0 0.07 equals, and I get $17.50. Okay, so since this is simple interest, we leave it there. So the next time we have $250 in year two and we add $250. So that will make us a total of 500. I'm going to change this title then to new balance, not the 10 issue. All right, now we're going to multiply 500 times 0 0.07 and we get $35. Okay, now we add 500 and we add 250 to that and our new balance is 750. We continue to multiply by 0.07. So 750 times 0.07 and that equals $52.50. Next we have, so we have 750 at the beginning of the next year. We add 250, in my case, $1,000 is the new balance. Multiply it again by 0 0.07, and you can guess we get $70. All right, last year we start with $1,000. We add 250, and we have a total of new balance of 1250 we multiply by 0 0.7 or 0 0.7 and we get 1250 times 0 0.07 $87 and 50 cents. All right, now let's go back up and answer the questions. His account earns how much money in the first year? In my case, it's $17 and 50 cents. In the second year, 
it earns twice that much because we have twice as much money in the account. And in year five, we earn $87.50. So depending on what you have in this column and in this column, your numbers are over here are going to change. But what you're looking for is what is the number at the end of the first year? What is the amount in the second year and then the fifth year? So this was all simple interest calculations. And I want to uh, remind you what the formula for simple interest is before we go forward. I is for interest equals P for the principal, that's that new balance column, times R, which is the rate, interest rate, and T. And in each case here, T was one because we did it one year at a time. Okay, that's question number one. Again, you can slow this down, stop it whenever you want to, so you can catch up. All right, let's look at number two. Now we have Carrie, who deposits, in my case, $100 in an account every year on the same day. She makes no other deposits or withdrawals. The account earns 6% interest. Complete the table. <clears throat> and this one is compounded annually. So what that means is, and this is the table you want to construct when you're doing a compounding table. And you saw this in the Your Turn already built for you. So years, which year you're at, the beginning balance of that new year, the amount you deposited at the beginning of the year, and you add these two numbers together, and you get the new balance. Then you have the interest rate, and you're going to multiply that by the new balance. So new balance times this. And you're going to write down the amount of interest earned on that amount of money. And you write down the interest here. And then your ending balance is the addition of the interest earned and the new balance. So let's see. On the first one, we started with $0 in. Put in 100. So the new balance was $100. The interest rate was 6%. So we multiplied 100 by 0.06 times 0.06 for the interest, and we got $6. And then in the last column, we added new balance plus the interest to 106. Now here's where it changes between simple interest and compound interest. At the ending balance becomes the starting balance of the next year. So we have 106 over here, and we put that here. We don't make any changes. Then we have the amount he deposits in the second year, which is $100. So what is that going to be? The beginning balance plus the amount deposited will be $206. Okay, remember, your numbers might be different, but you should fill them out the same way I'm doing it. And you should be going along uh, while you watch. So if we have $206 and 6% interest, so 206 times 0.06, and we get $12.36. For me, in my interest and in my uh, amount deposited, and my ending balance is going to be the sum of those two numbers. So 206 plus $12.36. And my ending balance is 218.36. So for question number two, Depending on what you have in the deposit column and the interest rate columns, your numbers will be different from mine. But the bottom line is whatever the ending balance is on line one becomes the beginning balance on line two. You add whatever's in this column, amount deposited, to get the new balance. And this is the number that you use to multiply by the interest rate to get the amount of interest earned. Once you have the amount of interest earned, you add that to the new balance to get the ending balance. And this is how compounding accounts will grow faster than simple accounts, simple interest accounts. Okay, pause it if you need to. I'm going to move on. <coughs> now let's look at Carrie doing something different. It's about $200 in an account every year on the same day. She makes no other deposits or withdrawals, and the account earns 4% compounded annually. 
Now let's complete the table again. Same table. We have the year, the beginning balance, the amount deposited, the new balance, then the interest rate and the amount of interest earned, and the ending balance. So if our interest rate is 4%, 4% equals 0 0.04. Okay, so let's assume things are going smoothly. We had $200 every year. We add the interest to that balance every year. And we're coming down to uh, row three, go all the way across, and we have an ending balance of $649.29. That is what we place in the beginning balance of the next row, 649. Point twenty nine. In my case, whatever is in this spot is what you put in this spot. All right, now we're going to add two hundred dollars to that. So six hundred forty nine plus two hundred is eight hundred and forty nine and twenty nine. So now let's do clear that. So eight forty nine times point oh four for the interest is now 33.97. Now this one, if you look at the calculator, it says 9716. In financials, we want two decimal places because that's how much you use for cents. So 97 cents and we round down. So it's 9.97, 33.97 and we're going to add the new balance to that, so we'll add 849.29 and we get 883.26 as our final. So we have for this problem filled in year four with the beginning balance, which was the ending balance from year three. We added the amount deposited to that beginning balance to get the new balance. We multiplied the interest rate, 0.04, times the new balance to get the interest for the year. And we added that interest to the new balance to get the ending balance. So in this case, we had to fill in four of the last, four numbers on the last row. Again, you can pause anytime you want to uh, catch up or slide over to HRW to work your problem. Okay, number four, Theo deposits $2,000 in a savings account, compounded interest, at an annual rate of 6%. He makes no additional deposits or withdrawals. Use the formula to, uh, for compound interest to find the amount in the account after, total, after 10 years. Now, we're talking about in the account, which means everything. It's not the interest anymore. It's the total amount in the account. So first of all, let's define our uh, numbers for the P, T, and R. So P is principal, so that's 2,000. The rate is 6%, and that is 0 0.06, and the time is 10 years. Now, write this down if you haven't before. The formula for compound interest is A. A stands for the total amount, like we're saying the total amount in the account. P, parentheses, 1 plus R, and then the exponent of T. So you're going to need to have a calculator that has this function over here. See this little rooftop? That is an exponent. You're going to need something like this, so a scientific calculator to be able to do the math here. Now, Fatima and I were working today, and we went on to Google and just typed in online scientific calculator, and Google showed up with one. And instead of the rooftop, they had something that looked like x to the y power. So if you find either this or you see x to the y power, either one of those is going to work for you. So let's look, now let's go back to calculating um, the total amount. So A equals P, which is 2,000. 
1 plus r, so that's 1 plus 0 0.06, and that is to the power of 10. All right, 2,000. 1 plus 0 0.06 is 1.06. Make sure that's clear, to the power of 10. Okay, now it's time to bring out the calculator because I can't do that in my head. So what you always start with is the interest rate to the power. So we're going to 1.06, watch this, rooftop, 10. And I get 1.79 and it goes 0, 08 after that so I round down to 1.79. Okay, now let's final, finalize the problem, finish the problem. 2000 times 1.79. And now we have $3,580. I'm going to check that out, that's too clean. Yep, $3,580. So our answer, after 10 years, there will be $3,580, no cents in the account. And that's what A is. <coughs> okay, it is very important that you use this formula. When you do any kind of testing, or if you're looking at your notes, you will be able to have that formula in front of you. So right now, if you haven't already, make a note. This is the formula for compound interest. And depending on your calculator, you'll see either a rooftop like we do on the ones we have at school, or if you go on the online scientific calculator, um, you will see something that looks like x to the y, and in this case you would put 1.06 here, and then you would hit that, that button, and then enter the 10. If you have any questions on that, I'm here to help. All right, let's complete this. So let's think about this. I don't know what the pull downs are. Simple interest is, I'm not sure what's down here, but let's just go with the definition. Simple interest is paid on the principal and nothing else. And maybe there's, hopefully there's a pull down that says something like that. Simple interest. And then compound interest paid on principal and previously earned interest. So hopefully, since I'm not having my HRW in front of me, hopefully something like that will be in the pull down. So which one is going to be uh, give you more money? Compound interest will always give you more money than simple interest. Almost no one will use simple interest. Maybe your grandparents will, someone who wants to keep it simple. But banks and loan companies will always use compound interest because it creates more money. And it's actually the right thing to do. Money, using money costs money. All right, we're on question number six now. Mia has borrowed $2,700 from her grandparents. Okay, here's a very interesting problem, not one I would recommend doing very often, but let's work it through, take it easy. $2,700 from her grandparents to pay for college expenses. She pays $75 back each month and a simple interest at rate at an annual of 6% on the remaining balance at the end of each year. Okay, so how many months will it take her to pay off the loan? So let's see, she's going to pay off, let's see if I wrote this down. No. Give me a second here.
I was hoping I'd written it down earlier. Anyway, let's go with it. So in the she starts with $2,700 and she pays $75 per month. So $75 times 12 for the first year. So before she takes any interest, she'll do 75 times 12 and that's $900. So she will subtract $900 year one before anything happens. So she's got 2700 minus 900 would be $1,800. So now on this one, she's going to find the simple interest on $1,800 of 0.06. So times 0.06 Okay, she's going to pay them $108. All right. And still, now we're going to pay down another $900 for the second year. Okay, so $1,800 minus $900, because each year she pays a total of $900. We have $900 left. And here we have 1800 minus 900 is 900. We'll calculate the interest on this, but I don't think we're going to be asked that. So the next year she paid $54. And she has $900 left, and she's going to pay $75 a month. So she will actually, in the last year, finish. So she spent... Um, so 2700 divided by 75 should give us the same thing as 36. Yes, yeah, so she will be finished paying it off in 36 months. Calculated as, I believe, simple interest. So we'll say 36 months calculated as, I'm not sure what this one is. If you get stuck on this one, don't worry about it too much. Um, I will get updates on this problem when I look through it. And also you can get feedback from the problem itself. This one's a little bit of a strange one, um, and I'm not sure people would really structure a kind of a loan payback like this. So good luck on this problem. I think this has worked out correctly, but I'm going to check it out later as well. Okay, now we have $9,000. She pays them $225 each month for 40 months at a simple interest rate of, so P was $9,000. Simple interest rate was 5% on the remaining balance at the end of each year. How much simple interest will she pay altogether? So let's try that out. Let's just start with beginning balance. Amount paid, and this time instead of deposited, it's amount paid. Okay, then we have our interest rate and the interest paid, and we have our ending balance. And this time we're going to subtract, not add. So let's try this out. <coughs> okay, in year one, she starts out with $9,000. She pays $225 per month, so $225 times 12. So by the end of the first year, she's paid $2,700. I think I need another column in here, so let's make another column here. I'm going to change this one to New Balance, like we did in earlier.
and her ending balance is 6300 that was the balance that she had the interest paid on and again this is simple so we're going to keep it like that so year two the beginning balance is 6300 she pays down another 2700 And our new balance at the end of the year is 3600 And on 3600 at 5%, 3600 times 0 0.05. And we're going to pay only $100. And the ending balance will be that $3,600. In year three, She's got $3,600. She pays down $2,700. She's left with $900. And on $900 times 0 0.05, it's going to pay $45. And the ending balance is 900. <clears throat> I'm going to put this on pause for a second while I do some checking here. All right, I had to check something there, but um, we're on the right track here. All right, so at the beginning of year four, we only have $900 left. We're not going to have a full year, so we're going to pay down. <clears throat> to zero what it takes here. So 900 divided by 225 hopefully equals 4. So we're going to pay $900 off in a balance of zero and no more interest because there's no interest paid at the end of that year. So at the end of year one, she paid $315. That was on the balance of 6300 She paid $315. After year two, she paid an additional $100 on a balance of 3600 and another $45 at the end of year three. So in total, she paid, let's see, 315 plus 100 plus 45. So in total, she paid back $460 in interest. Okay, now, this one gets a little bit more complicated. Like I said, keeping things simple, uh, between family members, you might come up with something like this. But in general, um, this is not what you're going to be doing. So let's hope that we got it right, and let's move on. Okay, Jackson started a savings account with $50. He plans to deposit $50 a month for the next 12 months, and then continue those monthly deposits in the following years. The account earns interest at an annual rate of 4% based on his final yearly balance. Fill in the chart. Okay, so we don't have to make our own chart this time. First of all, if you are paying, let's see, let's start with P. Original was, well, it's, it's not really appropriate. P is going to be whatever is the new balance at the end of that year. So if you pay $50 a month, 50 times 12, He's going to put in $600 each year. So let's start here. We started with $50, and then he put in an additional 60, 600. So the new balance is the beginning plus the amount deposited by year end of 650. Remember, interest rate of 4% is equal to 0 0.04. So let's multiply 650 times. 0 0.04 and we get the interest for the first year as $26. Again, 
you will maybe have different numbers here and here, but it, the point is you take whatever the number is in, in the new balance and you multiply it by your interest rate to get your amount of interest. And then since this is compounding, you're going to add the interest to the new balance and you're going to get the ending balance. So we have 26 plus 650. And that is 676.00. That becomes the new balance, the beginning balance of so 676.00. Ending balance becomes the new balance of the next year. Okay, catch up for that. And we're saying $50 a month, so he's depositing another $600. In my case, if he does something different up here, you're going to calculate your annual amount deposited. So new balance is going to be 600 plus 670, 676, so 1276.00, 4%. And we are going to do 1276 times 0.04, and we get amount interest of $51.04. So we add that and we get 1,327.04. Again, these are my numbers. Make sure that you are doing the process but using your numbers. Okay, so we take this ending balance and we put it in the beginning balance of the next year, 1,327.04. We add $600 again, and that combines, gives us 19,1927.04. We have an interest rate of 4% in my case, so we're going to multiply 1927.04 times 0 .04, and we get an interest of 77.08. Now we take that number, 77.08, and add it to the new balance, and that is 1927.04, and we get a final of 2004.12, in my case. So your numbers might be different. You most likely have a different interest rate. Just remember to convert from the 4% to or whatever percent to the decimal. Um, your amount deposited each year might be different. So whatever it is, it's consistent year over year. And also, excuse me, the beginning balance will be based on what, what you starting in the savings account. But then at the end of every year, that ending balance becomes the beginning balance. Okay, let's move on to number nine. Almost there. Okay, we have accounts A and B both have a principal of $1,000. So P equals 1,000. An annual interest rate of 4%. R equals 4% equals 0 0.04. Okay, now we have, so no additional, so A a equals simple interest, and B account is going to have compound, compounded annually. Okay, let's watch these together. Okay, we're going to compare the amounts in the two accounts after 20 years, and which one's earning much interest more and which one how much more well it's clearly going to be the compound it's going to be earning it more but let's start with let's see this is account a I don't want it to confuse it with the a that we're going to do shortly okay so the formula for simple interest I equals P times R times T okay so let's see oh for T equals 20 P is 1000 Oops, shoot. Okay.
Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. I had the the recording on uh, pause. I didn't realize it. So let's go ahead on this one. Let me restart it. So we have two accounts, A and B, with a principal of 1000 each and an annual interest rate of 4% in my case. Yours might be different. And I write that as the decimal 0 0.04. And in this case, we're going to compare them after 20 years. The first one's going to be simple interest and the second one's going to be compounded annually. So let's start with the simple interest one. The formula in simple interest is I equals P times R times T. So P is 1000, R is 4% or 0 0.04, and T is 20 for 20 years. So let's calculate that. 1000 times 0 0.04 times 20, and we get I equals $800. So after 20 years with simple interest, we've earned $800. Okay, now when you're doing the formula for compounding, it's going to be a two-step process, not a one-step process. We start with a formula that tells us the total amount of money in the account, not the interest. But the formula is I equals P plus R to the T. And we had this in the problem earlier. All right, so, and this is going to be the total amount. In the end, we'll have to subtract the principal out of it. So let's put in what we know. We have $1,000. One plus the interest rate is 1 plus 0 0.04 to the 20 exponent. So let's do it again. 1,000, 1 1.04 to 20 exponent. All right, so let me bring the calculator over here where we can all see it. Oh, that's shadowed. So let's try this. So first of all, I say we always do the number in parentheses to the exponent, so 1.04 rooftop, 20. All right, so we have 1,000 times 2.19. So 1,000 times 2.19 will give us $2,190. Okay, we're not done. This is the total amount. So now for I, we're going to have to have A minus P. So A is 2,190 minus the original P, which was 1,000. The principal was 1,000. And we are left with an I, or an interest of $1,190. All right, let's see what that is. Can you see it all? All right, so for simple interest account A, we had earned $800 over 20 years. And in a compounded account, we earned 1190 So let's go up here. After 20 years, the compounding will have earned, all right, one more time, 1190 minus 800 $390 more. <clears throat> now, your numbers are going to be different, but you will do the same thing. On this side, we have the simple interest, straightforward formula, just multiply the principal times the rate times the time. On the others, we have step one, finding the total amount after 20 years, and step two, subtracting the principal from that total amount to get the interest earned. Okay, and if you don't have a calculator with the exponent sign on it, then you're going to go online to Online Scientific Calculator and use that. All right, we're going towards the end now. We're down number 10. So number 10, depositing, Luisa deposited $1,000, earning a simple interest of 10%. Okay. So let's see, the principal equals 1,000, and the interest is 10%, or 0 0.1. Now, instead of 0 0.01, it's 0 0.1, 10%. And she made no additional profit. She closed the account. She'd earned, she'd earned a total of, so I, in this case, was $1,000. And how long? So the thing we don't know is. All right. So 
we have our formula I equals P times R times T. We know I is 1,000. We know P is 1,000. Now yours might be different than mine. Now we're going to multiply that by the rate, which is 0 0.10 and times. Okay, so let's let's first multiply these two things together. 1,000 equals 1,000 times 0.1, 100. So 100 t. Now, if you remember from previous math, how do we get rid of the 100? We divide both sides by 100. We get t on this side, and 1,000 divided by 100 leaves us 10. So the answer is she had the account open for 10 years. So if you know three numbers out of four, you can always find the fourth. Nothing's changed. All right, you can pause it if you need to. I'm going to move on to, I'm thinking, the last one. <clears throat> All right. Amanda deposits $500 in savings account, earning simple interest of 8%. All right, so Amanda, she's got P equals 500, R equals 8%, which also is 0 0.08. Okay, so Tori, and that's simple interest. Okay, so Tori, she's got a P equals 1,000 and an annual rate of 10%, and that equals 0 0.10. Neither girl makes any additional deposits or withdrawals, which keeps our calculation simple. Which girl's account will reach the balance of 1,500 first? Huh. All right, so 1,500, let's just do this. So let's find out. To reach 1,500 would mean that Amanda's, so A equals 1,500, would mean equals P plus I. Okay, so 1,500 equals P plus I. Then I, if P is 500, equals 1,000. So we're going to ask, when is Amanda interest earns 1,000? Tories will do the same thing. A equals 1,500. And her, so 1,500 equals the original 1,000 plus I. Take away that. So then her interest is $500. I can already guess which one's going to go first. Let's make sure I've got all the numbers. So Amanda has $500 in principal with an 8% interest rate. And Tori has 1,000 starting off with in a simple interest rate of 10%. Which one's going to e reach 1,500 first? Well, she's got a higher interest rate and a higher deposit. So I know she's going to get there first, but let's see how quickly she gets there. So let's do what we just did before. I'm going to take Amanda first. I equals P times R times T. We know I is going to equal 1,000. That's what it's going to take to reach 1,500. P we know was 500. R we know was 8%, so 0 0.08. And we don't know what the time is. OK, so let's solve for that. 500 times 0 0.08, 40. So 1,000 equals 40T. Divide both sides by 40. 1,000 divided by 40. And it's going to take her 25 years to get that $1,000. That's a long time. So let's look at Tori. Same thing. I equals P times R times T. This is Tori. All right, now Tori started out with, so she only needs to get an I of 500. She had a starting amount of 1,000 times a rate of 
in a time which we don't know. So 1,000 times 0.1 is 100. So 500 equals 100t. So what do we know to get rid of that? We're going to divide 